What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping back in with some Destiny 2 news, as well as a few updates and we do have plenty to talk about in the video. So firstly we'll touch on some of what's been happening in the community of late, and then we'll get swiftly onto some game updates, a few issues and upcoming fixes both this season and alongside the fall expansion. We're going to touch on the new content this week in the game, as well as secrets in Season of Arrivals, upcoming quests and enemies, as well as a pretty crazy loot farm hotfix changes and more in this video, so if you guys enjoyed this one, a rating down below really does help me out. But now, let's get into it. First up today, we're going to have to speak about this, and you guys have probably seen some of what's been taking place over the past few days regarding the behaviour of certain creators in the community who've really taken advantage or attempted to take advantage of female streamers and community members in particular. And there has been a lot of conversation about it already, but as someone who's kind of always hoped we had a better community than that, which I know that we do on the most part, right? But I feel like we shouldn't ignore this, and as a community we should make it very clear that this sort of abusive and toxic behaviour is not acceptable. And you've likely heard the name Say No To Rage over the past few days, who's been accused of consistent, inappropriate behaviour historically. And then this drama around BSK, both in terms of the seedy behaviour of certain members, but also cheating, DDoSing and more. It's safe to say that a lot of unpleasant behaviour has been uncovered and highlighted. Even to the extent we've got numerous, numerous articles covering this, even the New York Times. And it is a shame that this started in our community, or in this instance. It kind of feels that way, right? But we should remember, if it's happening here, then it's happening elsewhere. And that will include the gaming community at large. And so I guess the positive that we can hope for is that this heightens awareness and means that more of it can be exposed, and more victims of this can start to feel like they have a voice, and can know that they're not alone, right? And so we should be proactively proud that we block people like this from the community and totally aim for something better because there's enough toxicity in the world and that has been proven over the past few weeks especially and I think it's our obligation to cut it out of our space guys, right? These dudes are done as far as I'm concerned. But let's get on to the game this week. And a few things are going on, so initially, onto more positive conversation, we have the new interference mission and quest for the week. And the second step for the quest is to collect umbral traces and that's the means to an end quest. And it appears that the easiest and fastest way to get this done this week is by running Menagerie. And then of course there's the Interference mission itself, which took us again into some cool territory in the Court of Savathun. And so quick spoiler alert, but here is Eris' closing dialogue for this week. This construction is white. Not like the colour, but the absence of colour. An indistinct void, overexposed sameness of a thing long dead. The white of bleached bone of the Traveller. As always with Eris, nothing is particularly clear. But again, moving into future weeks, we're going to see some familiar enemies, as well as creepy new spaces in this mission. And spoiler alert once again, but JB3 has now posted a video showing Nocris hidden away in the Interference mission. And for now, it is basically what you can see in the image they shared right here. Although Jins are added as well. Nocris, the supplicant to Savathun, as well as an objective obviously coming up in the future, but destroy Nocris, supplicant to Savathun, and cleanse this realm. So very clearly we're going to be running into a familiar enemy inside of the Interference mission in the future. And the Glowing Hive Knights of course drop throwable relics the same as in the Nocris Strike, so it's possible when we get that fight that it'll have some similar mechanics. But it's not the only secret that the Interference mission actually holds, and of course JB3 previously shared another hidden space that shows all enemy races in awe at the arrival of the Pyramid Ship. And so things are totally going to go down in the future. But this week we do have the new Contact boss, very similar to a Court of Oryx boss from back in D1, and players have displayed some frustration about other players not necessarily knowing what's up with the mechanics. But basically you have to keep the Sword Knight, or the little boss guy, close to the big boss guy. When they're close together, the boss's shields go down, and if you kill the smaller guy, you can just wait for another one to spawn. And once again, lead him close to the main boss, those shields are going to go down, and he can get your damage in. So essentially you have to get down and dirty with this Taken this week, and try not to lead the two enemies away from each other. But otherwise this season, we've got a lot left to show up. The quest for Ruinous Effigy is quite likely to be here on July 7th, or by July 7th. So that's in the next couple of weeks, and we've spoken about how some of that will work. Bungie also recently shared what the exotic will look like in gameplay, but then this season we also have Travelers Chosen a little bit later on, and that'll be a reward from the Evacuation Quest, which is actually two different quest steps 
which partly revolve around new weekly bounties and Exodus-focused Umbral Engrams, which will appear on locations that are going away in September. And then we've got the arrival of Contact on Titan, Moments of Triumph, and Solstice of Heroes, as well as reveals for September. So it certainly isn't the lightest season that we will have had this year, and I think we're all fairly glad about it. Let's talk about some updates and changes in the game this week. We did get a new hotfix, and Bungie updated the Tommy's Matchbook Catalyst. And it does make the catalyst easier to progress, but it also reset any progress that we already had on the quest. And DMG said we reduced the requirements in hopes of offsetting some of the sting, and he apologizes for the lost progress on that quest. A little bit of a weird one, but on the subject of seasonal catalyst progression moving forward, somebody said, could you change the catalyst progression perks in the season pass to apply to all catalysts that drop as part of seasons? And they made the point that it would be pretty useful for players coming in who have maybe missed a season or two and want to upgrade older catalysts. So it is a good shout, and DMG said, this is something that the team is looking at, not just for Tommy's matchbook, but for all season pass exotics and catalyst quests. And so perhaps by September, or in the seasons that follow, that'll be a mechanic where they kind of generalize that bonus to apply to all season pass related exotics. And on the subject of the heavy hitters triumph and the contact public event, of course, changing with a new boss this week, the triumph which tracks all of the bosses defeated isn't actually ticking them all appropriately. And someone pointed out that the Taken Howler doesn't check off on the triumph box either. And so hopefully when Bungie do get that fixed, it will be retroactive and recognize bosses we've already taken out. Otherwise, of course, we're gonna have to run those events over three weeks again. DMG clarified something about armor focusing right here. So on the subject of focused umbral engrams, if you focus an engram on a specific armor stat, for instance, mobility, you are guaranteed 10 or more mobility to drop on that armor piece. There is still potential for other stat types to drop at a higher point value. And feedback has been passed along on the title and description text and how it's confusing to focus an engram on a specific stat type only to see an alternative stat drop much higher. And so it's good to have clarification about that at the very least. Whichever stat you focus is an into is guaranteed to have at least 10 of that stat, but the rest of the stats are still random, so it is possible that you could get a different stat which actually rolls out with a higher number. And so it's good to know, but also it's potentially something that Bungie will adjust. And speaking of adjustments that will come further down the road, players have been discussing the fact that a bunch of PvP objectives for certain players aren't progressing, you know, on milestones and bounties and things like that. And DMG said that the team believes they've identified the cause, but are working out exactly how to fix it, and the earliest we can expect this to be fixed is in the fall. And so any of those objectives not being completed or not completing reliably is potentially a problem we're going to have for another couple of months. But also on the subject of changes related to content going away, somebody said, can we please remove the RNG from sleeper nodes on Mars before the destination gets vaulted? And Cosmo said he sent this feedback to the team in the last week, so it's possible they could drop some minor updates for the availability of certain bits of content associated with locations that are going to be vaulted. Cosmo also clarified that they're working on getting the Redrix broadsword into the loot table to drop, of course for randomized roles. And Mtash pointed out that at the moment the only way to actually get more is to redo the quest, which of course isn't fun if you've already done it. So hopefully that's another thing that will be sorted out shortly. Moving away from dev updates for a moment, let's talk about a pretty silly loot glitch in the dungeon that allows players to checkpoint the final chest in the dungeon. And that's right, it means you can farm the chest essentially over and over again. This has been spoken about by a few people, but also my pal Jarv has a video on precisely how to farm loot inside of the dungeon here. So I'll link that down below. The chest itself only drops pinnacle once a week, but you can farm it for Moonfang armor and some of the nine gear as well as XP and Umbral Engrams, but it's especially useful for going after high stat roll armor. So basically, in a team, you need to kill the final boss, and as soon as that boss dies, if you can have one player leave the team immediately, it will actually give the player who leaves the chest checkpoint for the dungeon. And so if that player goes ahead and checks they have it, once loaded up, they can invite others into the fire team to actually open the chest. And if you join the fire team of someone on that checkpoint for the chest on a fresh character, you can leave as soon as you start flying in, to actually duplicate the checkpoint to yourself. And so basically, if you keep sharing the checkpoint in this way, you can farm the chest over and over again. Just be careful to not all load into the chest checkpoint at the same time or open it together. Because as far as I know, this will clear the checkpoint on that character. You can check out Jarv's video if you want more info on it, but it's a pretty good farm for high stat armor. And you also seem to get two or three Umbral Engrams dropped on the early chest clears, which of course is pretty useful. Jarv's video will be linked down below. Just to quickly skim over some of the patch notes yesterday, as we didn't break them all down in the video, but Bungie made additional fixes for controller remapping and a few control input bugs. Of course, there was the fix for the Tommy's Matchbook Catalyst quest. They sorted out a problem where the D2 Beyond Light pre-order emblem wasn't appearing in collections. 
an issue where seasonal artifact mods required more glimmer than intended to be socketed, and then the Prophecy Dungeon solo triumph unlocking, and the problem where players had an invisible ship, black emblem, and zero power level displayed when in orbit. Of course, the adjustment to Wither Horde dealing a lot of damage to various enemies. And importantly, the weapon still feels pretty decent at the moment. It doesn't feel like it's seen a massive nerf, so that's a positive. And you can see some changes to armor and gear collections right here, including that they fixed a problem where the insight on yielding Titan Gauntlets could obscure the screen when aiming bows, and this was one that was present well, months ago. Maybe they only just fixed it now. I haven't actually worn those things in a long time, but that's the bulk of the patch changes for what they dropped yesterday. And otherwise for today, that's everything we have to speak about, but of course we'll get this week at Bungie later on this week. I'm anticipating the potential of Iron Banner next week. And then of course that exotic quest probably dropping by July 7th, but Moments of Triumph for the Year is going to kick off at the same time, so we're not far away from more stuff to do and talk about. If you guys have enjoyed this video though, a rating below really does help me out. Give us your thoughts on any of the subjects we've spoken about today in the comments section as well, guys. And if you're new around here and you want to be kept up to date with the world of Destiny, you can also feel free to hit subscribe and turn on those notifications. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for the support. And whatever you get up to, stay safe and have an awesome day.